Good morning, Mr. Moray. Good morning. Good morning. From Romania, from Atlantic Cron. I'm Sorin Repanovic, I'm coordinator of this program. Thank you very much because you accept our invitation to be the virtual guests. We are honored, sir. Well, it's a wonderful honor to be here. I invite our, uh, my colleagues now, we already met uh, Gabriel Versan, which coordinates from technical point of view, but not only he will be the man who uh, manages the questions. And also, Mrs. Anka is from uh, Complexity Studies and uh, Heather Cotton from World Genetics Foundation. And also don't forget we are 300 young people here on the island waiting to have a dialogue with you, sir. What is the name of the island? The name? Of the island. Of the island. The name of the island is Atlantic one. Atlantico? Yes. Atlantico. Oh, Atlantico. Yes. It's a small, it's a small island like a stadium in the middle of the Danube. It's called the Atlantic on Summer Academy. So hello everyone, this is Michael Gelb. I'm here with Murray. Hello Michael. And how are you? Another, another great day we have today here. We just finished a, a conference with uh, NASA, with the men who manage uh, the landing of uh, Curiosity last year. And we learned a lot after one year experience of Curiosity on Mars. That's great. Well, yesterday I spoke to you about one of history's great geniuses. And today I'm actually visiting with you with one of our great geniuses, Professor Murray Gelman, and I've received by email some of the questions from the group, so I thought we could begin, I could pose those questions to Murray, and then he can respond. Sounds great. Sounds very great. Uh, hello, Mr. Murray. My name is uh, Gabriel Volsan. Uh, we want to ask, you are a co-founder of Santa Fe Institute, so uh, uh, for our public, uh, if you like to say a few words about Santa Fe Institute and uh, uh, what uh, what's happening there, it's a uh, theoretical research institute. We leave the uh, experiments and observations to others, and we concentrate on the theory using computers, using pencil and paper, uh, using conversation and so on. The, uh, <clears throat> the subject matter is varied. A lot of it has to do with uh, evolutionary change. <coughs> the fossil record in uh, paleontology, uh, biological evolution, uh, the evolution of human languages, uh, many, many topics along those lines. And uh, we uh, familiarize ourselves with the results of observation and try to understand regularities in the world around us. It is uh, not required that our researchers work on subjects where they have degrees. If uh, someone is a PhD in physics that is very knowledgeable about paleontology and wants to work on that for a while, that's perfectly all right. You know, that we don't, would approve, right? We don't, yes. We don't uh, maintain what are sometimes called silos, specialized chambers with particular uh, sciences, excluding other scientists. We don't do that. Uh, when we first started, a lot of our colleagues in science were skeptical. What? You have an institute without departments? Who ever heard of such a thing? Surely it won't work. Well, we discovered
whatever they did were. We anticipated that there would be a large number of people, there might, that there might be, I should say, a large number of researchers who had been dying for years to work with people across disciplinary lines. And uh, indeed, uh, turned out to be true. Well, <laughs> it's great. Thank you for the uh, for the answer. Uh, now, the question arose of uh, what subject, what the subject matter would be. Yep. And it turned out that uh, mostly people were interested in working on uh, problems of evolution in all sorts of different fields, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the uh, Various topics would all be uh, compared with one another, utilized together. The, the methods, I mean, utilized together. Uh, but the main thing is it was a lot of fun. It was a blast <laughs> starting the Institute. Uh, I called up people, scientists, who we thought might be interested, might be interested in this new style, no departments and so on. And uh, but uh, I was afraid that it might come out different. That the people I've telephoned might say, "This sounds pretty interesting," but uh, you know, I have my teaching and my research projects. Uh, I have two consulting contracts with uh, business organizations, and uh, generally speaking, I'm pretty busy. So uh, I don't think I have time to do anything at your institute. Uh, don't call me, I'll call you. <laughs> that was how I envisaged the first case, <laughs> our first interview. But you know what they said instead? What they actually said was, I've been waiting for this all my life. When can I start? <laughs> wow. uh, Mr. Uh, Murray, uh, my name is Anka. I run the complexity in, uh, science program here at Atlantic Run. Um, I have a spontaneous question for you, if you allow it. Um, we have a lot of young minds here, and uh, we've been doing complexity um, lectures and workshops for the past days and for the past 20 years here at Atlantic Run. Could you tell these young minds why is, why is the science of complexity important for them? Why should they learn about it and what opportunities are there in the world for them if they um, get interested in it? Thank you. The, uh, in the world around us, we see, or can see, especially if we are scientists, we can see irregularities of many kinds. But the, the, crudely speaking, the story is one of simple laws which often have complex manifestations. And uh, it's exciting to look for the simple laws and understand them as much as possible. It's also exciting to look at how uh, chance and other uh, uh, features relating to complexity complicate the issue, complicate the, uh, the uh, uh, behavior of what we're studying. So I'm not trying to favor uh, simple laws, simple universal laws, and say that we shouldn't study anything else. At the same time, I wouldn't recommend studying only complexity and leaving out <laughs> wonderful simple laws that are quite general. The, uh, the whole world shows an interplay between these two kinds of things. 
interplay between simple general laws and uh, complex uh, individual situations. Is that clear, by the way, or should I? Yes, thank you, thank you so much for uh, for your kind words. Uh, this is uh, Gabi Bursan speaking. Um, we know that uh, you received in 1969 uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics for your work in the theory of uh, elementary particles. And uh, uh, you postulated the theory connected to hadrons. Um, this, uh, uh, I want to ask you if... Uh, uh, theory related to hadrons. Oh, hadrons, yes, yes, yeah. for sure. So now in the world we have uh, the Large Hadron Collider which is uh, which is uh, near uh, Geneva, Geneva, uh, yes. at the border of uh, Switzerland and France. So it's, it's uh, can we say that you are the inventor of the word hadron? No, uh, that's not true. Uh, somebody else invented it. Uh, I remember when it was first proposed, but right for the moment I've forgotten who, who proposed it. Uh, I was not the inventor of the word hadron. Yeah, but uh, uh, you were the first uh, of, uh, uh, people who used it in a, a very clear theories that uh, actually lead to uh, your Nobel Prize and uh, other uh, very interesting theories. The word itself might be related to the English word sad. There he is. I just asked Murray to uh, to explain the word quark and how he originated that word because that's the word he did come up with. Yeah, that that was the next question. Thank you, Michael. Got you covered. Well, the hadrons, the strongly interacting particles, are uh, are made of are composed of uh, quarks and antiquarks and uh, gluons that hold them together. The nucleus. Uh, so the theory of hadrons is the theory of quarks, antiquarks, and gluons. And uh, I made up the name quarks. It just seemed like an obvious sort of name for fundamental constituents of hadronic matter. <laughs> quarks. But uh, then uh, we discovered that it was in the dictionary, meaning several different things. One was the cry of a gulf. You know, it was seabirds. Oh, gulls. The cry of a gull. And then we also heard that in the uh, difficult novel of James Joyce, uh, Finnegan's Wake, uh, the word quarks appears uh, in the following way. The uh, Hero, so to speak, of the uh, of the uh, book is a bartender, a publican, the owner of a bar on the Liffey River that flows through Dublin, Ireland, and uh, the uh, the little phrase that contains the word is three quarks for Muster Mark. And, and so on and so forth. Um, the, uh, the quarks represent the following. Throughout the book, throughout Finnegan's Way, there are four commentators who appear in different guises at different times. So at one point, there are four old men in a park in Dublin. Uh, they are also uh, four uh, sexual acts. It uh, take place as as uh, Tristram brings the sail in the park. But instead of uh, simply guarding her, he uh, gets her to fall in love with him. Imagine him with the three quarks on. 
Mark was rather complex in itself. Yeah, it seems like the word is a little bit more complex than originally uh, when you came up the word, what it was originally designed for. <laughs> yep. God knows what they're saying about us. <laughs> uh, Mr. Murray, we have one more question from the audience. Uh, sure. Uh, so the question comes from Andy uh, here in front is that uh, well, you are, a, you are an accomplished scientist in the pre-complexity era and um, you were one of the founder of this proposal to change uh, the, the paradigm. Well, what personal experiences in your researcher's life determined you to come, with, uh, come up with this uh, proposal and initiate it? Um, was this an act of courage in the science world? I'm just going to read the question to Mary again. The sound was terrible. The sound is terrible. So, but we have that question here in email. So let me read it here to Murray. Same question. Same question. It is a. It is well known that you are a top performer in science in the pre-complexity era. One of the founders of this proposal to change the paradigm. Which were the personal experiences in your research life that determined you to initiate this change? Yes. Uh, very interesting set of questions. Uh, first of all, let me repeat that any serious study of any serious general study of nature and natural phenomena would have to include simple, general, regular laws plus plus. Uh, Plus individual experiences, uh, accidents, if you want to call them, simple regularities plus whole behavior of the whole world is like that. Uh, I myself have always been interested in both. One shouldn't think that I started somehow as a physics person, studying the general laws of physics. Very the age. Simple general laws. The uh, special circumstances that apply in the case. I abandoned pre-complexity science or <laughs> complexity science I was interested in simple plus complex science. And in helping to found the institute I mean that if people would study both at the same time. That's great. Is that, but, is that clear? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Um, we want to thank you from all the participants here for spending time with us tonight. Thank you so much, Michael, for being there as well. This has been an amazing conversation. And from all of us here on the island of Atlantic Prom and World Genesis Foundation, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. Motsamin, thank you. Okay, take care. See you next time. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.